Hello everyone, this is Soumya, working as an assistant professor, Government Pass Grade College, Vijayanagar, Bangalore. Uh, in this video, I'll be explaining about the body coelom, uh, like how the body coelom is there in lower vertebrates and in the higher vertebrates, and different types of body coelom with the suitable examples. Well, what body coelom is? Body coelom is nothing but the space between the gut and the body wall. You know, the gut, which actually includes the digestive tract of an individual and the outer body wall. The space between the gut and the body wall is what we call the coelom. Coelom is lined by the coelomic epithelium and that coelomic epithelium is derived from the embryonic mesodermal layer. We know in the last, uh, we, uh, one of our last videos, I explained about the German germ layers that is the uh, mesoderm, ectoderm, and endoderm. Here, in case of the coelom, whatever the coelomic epithelial cells are there, they are derived out of mesoderm. So, coelom is the space between the gut and the body wall, which is lined by the coelomic epithelium, and that coelomic epithelium is derived from the mesoderm. When we look into the specific features of a coelom, coelom usually develops from the mesoderm, as I said. Uh, while developing, it uh, bifurcates. It actually bifurcates into two layers, that is the somatic layer, uh, which is lying next to the epidermis, and the splanchnic layer, which is around the endoderm. The two layers will be bifurcated during the development of coelom. Coelom, uh, as I said, it is surrounded by the coelomic epithelium, which secretes coelomic fluid. The greater part of the coelom forms the paravisceral cavity. Uh, coelom, uh, which is uh, fluid filled inside, it also lodges the visceral cavity. That's why in case of the higher animals, uh, the viscera, uh, because uh, in case of the higher individuals, whatever the vital organs are there, they are plunged in the visceral cavity. But the outer uh, musculature movement doesn't affect the internal vital organs because of the presence of the coelom. In all these, uh, we can see when we look into the ancestral, like the evolution of the coelom, uh, like how uh, in the previous organisms, uh, there is no coelom, but later on there will be the development of the coelom. The development of the coelom actually explains the significance of coelom in order to protect the vital uh, visceral organs, uh, which will be affected by the animal movement. And uh, whatever uh, the coelomic uh, later on in the course of evolution, the gametes pouches, which will be formed in the coelom, uh, that is also formed by the proliferation of the coelomic cells and later on that uh, involved in the gamete formation and the process. So this is about the formation of coelom and the uh, specific characters of coelom. Next, we'll look into the types of coelom. So we can categorize uh, three different kinds of coelom. I mean, the animal kingdom will be categorized into three different types based on presence or absence of coelom. That is, acelomates, pseudocelomates, and the eucelomates. So the animals which possess, which do not possess coelom, the that comes under acelomates. It means there is no fluid filled cavity in them. The space between the gut and the wall is filled by the densely packed connective tissue, which is derived both from the ectoderm and the endomesodermal layers. Uh, that is called the parenchyma. In case of the acelomid, there is no coelom and that cavity is filled by the parenchymal cells, which is derived from the ectoderm and endomesodermal cells. And the animals, uh, most of the triploblastic animals are uh, uh, not having the coelom and those are called as acelomates. Example for them are the platyhelminthus, nevageria. Uh, these are the major examples for acelomate and individuals. See, in this picture, we can see how the acelomate individual body wall is there. This is the digestive tract, the gut, and this is the ectoderm and the mesoderm. Here, we don't find any space, any coelomic cavity. Hence, these are acelomates. Next, we'll move on to the pseudo coelomates. Pseudo coelom is nothing but pseudo means the false, coelom is the coelomic cavity. Here, in case of this, the individual will not possess uh, coelom, but it appears like it is having a kind of uh, coelom within them. 
So here, the fluid-filled body cavity between the gut and the body wall is generally formed by the uh, embryonic blastocele and, uh, and is called the pseudocele. In case of the pseudocelomates, uh, externally, their body cavity is covered by means of fibrous tissue and fibrous tissue, and internally they are having the intestine. The pseudo, in case of these pseudocelomates, the pseudocelomic fluid cavity, which is having in them, that will be helpful. Uh, that act as a hydrostatic skeleton to maintain the body shape and to circulate the nutrients. And the animal which possesses pseudocelomate can be considered as pseudocelomates. So the pseudocelomate examples for the pseudocelomates are the rotifers, nematoda, nematophora, lorisifera. Those are all the examples for the pseudocelomate individuals. Next is the coelomate or eucelomate animals. The animals which possess true coelom, those comes under eucelomates. Coelom is nothing but the lining between the gut and the body wall. Here we can see the space or a coelom where between the gut and the body wall. This is the coelom which will be seen in case of the eucelomate. The individual which possess true coelom uh, are the eucelomates. Examples are the molluscans, onychophorans, annelids, orthopodans, chordates, all chordates, echinoderms, bryozoos, hemichordates, all these individuals comes under eucelomata. Based on the development of eucelomates, we can categorize it into two other types, that is schizocelome and enterocelome. In case of the schizocelome, the schizocelome and enterocelome uh, is classified based on the uh, development of the coelome cavity. In case of the schizocelome, uh, here the coelomic cells that will be arrived or uh, that will arise by splitting the mesodermal bands in the early embryonic stages. In the early embryonic stages, when the coelomic cells are derived from the uh, endodermal cells, endodermal bands, and later on, they will proliferate and becomes the true coelom or uh, produces the coelom cavity, then these are considered as the schizocelomes. Examples, the molluscans, annelids, arthropods, and onychopodans can be considered under schizocelom in which the coelom cavity that is produced in these individuals, the coelomic cells will be derived from the mesodermal cells of early embryos. In case of the enterocelus, here uh, the coelom will be formed by the evagination of the embryonic archenteron. So here there will be, uh, the from the embryonic archenteron, the cells, the coelomic cells, will develop proliferate and later on that will get pinched off from them and later on that develops into the coelomic cavity. And those are enterocelous. Hemichordates and chordates, echinoderms, those can be included under enterocelous. Okay. To conclude this, in this video, we discussed the, uh, what the coelom is and the specific characters of coelom and types of coelom and the examples for different types of coelom and the origin of or the types of coelom based on the uh, origin of the cells which will be derived from uh, derived during the embryonic development and these are the references that we ref that i refer for this uh, presentation thank you